Hello, hello! So first things first, you'll need to download the blend file that I've provided in the description. This file has all the models you'll be using to create our sci-fi city. These models were sourced from Sketchfab and I'll link to the creator in the description so you can check out their other work. So we're going to use an add-on called Vegapie. This is a free tool that has a bunch of useful features like ivy, scattering, and arrays. It's a really great add-on for a free tool so I highly recommend it. To install Vegapie, download the zip file from this Gumroad website, then go to Blender's preferences, Click on edit, then preferences, then add-ons, then install. Look for the zip file you just downloaded it and install the add-on. You'll see the Vegapi modifier in the list of add-ons and you can just click the checkbox to enable it. Next, open the Vegapi add-on by pressing J or N. This will display all the features of the add-on including the scattering tool. But you'll see the actual Pi menu by pressing J. Now first, we need to create a plane by pressing Shift A, then selecting plane. Then we need to scale up the plane by pressing S, dragging cursor to the right and making it big enough to cover the area where you want the objects to be scattered. Next is you need to apply the scale by pressing Ctrl A or using the apply scale option in the F3 search menu. This will ensure that the plane is the correct size for scattering objects on. Select the object that you want to scatter, then shift click the plane, then press J. Then select scatter. This will open the scatter options menu. In the menu, choose whether to use a proxy or reduce the percentage of the objects to be scattered. Using a proxy will improve performance when scattering a large number of objects. But for this tutorial, I won't be using these. Now you can just adjust the distance minimum, scale minimum, scale maximum values to control the distribution and size of the scattered object. The distance minimum will control how close the scattered objects can be to one another. So this is useful for objects that are clipping into each other and they're kind of merging. And if you want to avoid that, you can change the distance minimum. You can also adjust the seed of the scatter and the scale variation to get different distribution of the object. Once you are satisfied with the distribution and size of the scattered objects, you can repeat the steps for each additional object you want to scatter in the scene. You can also use other features like the array and ivy generation tools to add more variation and complexity to the scene. Now we're gonna change the world color to black to make this a night scene. This can be done by going to the world properties panel adjusting the color of the world option to black. Then I'm going to add a sun lamp to the scene by pressing A and selecting light, then sun. The sun lamp will be the main light source for the scene. Move the sun lamp to the right side of the scene by pressing G or just move it to an easier place to manipulate. Now you can just adjust the direction of the sun lamp by clicking on the yellow icon or ball. This will allow you to change the direction that the light is coming from and help create more interesting and dynamic lighting in the scene. Unfortunately, we can't scatter lights, so we need to have to place the lights manually, pressing Shift A to add more lights. Use point lights or area lights this time instead of sunlight so they don't contradict with the general direction of the sunlight that we just added. Since it's hard to select the lights, we can use the outliner here on the top right to select the lights and manipulate their power and radius. From here, you can continue adding lamps, adjusting the position, radius, power, and color of these lights, as well as duplicate the light of your choice by pressing Shift D. To get an epic render of the city, create a camera by pressing Shift A, then selecting camera. You can press this button to go to the camera view. From here, you can fly around the city by using the Shift the key and this will allow you to navigate around the scene and find the perfect shot for your render using WASD keys just like a video game. You can also adjust the focal length of the camera in the camera properties panel. This will allow you to control the perspective of the shot. I recommend for things like these, maybe you can go for 15 to 20 millimeters. This will show more of the area if you want this to be like a really massive scale. Then. Press F12 to render the image and use it as a backdrop for a scene or background for your comic book or your webtoon or just general illustration. This will create the final image of the scene that you can use in various ways. After the render, you can save this image by pressing Alt Shift S or just go through the menus to save it and find the directory where you want to save this. And then you can open it up on whichever art program you want to use it in. After the render, you can also play with the composition, post-production of the image 
with tools like color correction, adding lens flares, or adjusting the exposure and brightness to enhance the final image. And there you have it. Now you have a render of a beautiful sci-fi city in just a few steps. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to see another video where I do this kind of 3D workflow walkthrough of another scene, you can go check out this one. This one features a medieval village scene. And as always, thanks for watching.